What is up guys? Welcome to the YouTube channel Invoke Performance. I'm Rashad and guys I have some insane new content for you guys as I promised. As you can see behind me I have a very large go-kart frame and I have the budget electric motorcycle build here. But guys I'm going to combine the power and the things I've learned from the budget electric build to build a high powered mud thrashing dune buggy. So guys let's check this out and we're going to see what we can do. All right, so guys, as we walk around the go-kart here, let's take a look at it. This is a large frame Murray uh, go-kart, and it has some very, very high strength tubing, and the, the actual diameter of the tubing is very thick, which is what I wanted. It came with originally a 13 horsepower motor, so that's gonna go away, and then it gives me plenty of room to mount batteries back here, and the motor from the budget electric build. Guys, that motor, on average, makes about over 30 horsepower, and this makes 13 horsepower. So you can see the power difference and the size difference, which I'm gonna show you here shortly. And the, the goal for this is at least 50 miles an hour. And then I want insane torque to get out of anything. So let's walk around it some more. As you can see, it has huge mud tires. Guys, this thing is gonna be crazy. And it comes with the roll bar in case we flip it, which is a strong possibility at the speeds that I'm looking to obtain here. So come around here. Uh, I've got a standard pedal set up, so I'm gonna be playing around with those. I'm gonna convert from cable to uh, drive-by wire, just like on the bike. And let's move over to the bike and see how this stuff is gonna work. So as you guys remember from the budget build video, if you haven't seen, click the link in the top of this video here to take you to that build. And here it is. So we have all these Chevy Volt batteries which is over four and a half kilowatts right here. And there's the big electric motor. And here is the controller also, the Alltrack 72400, which is designed to move a large go-kart. So it definitely has the power to uh, fuel this project. Uh, and as you can remember, here's the FuelTech 450 screen. I'm gonna be mounting the screen over the steering wheel, guys. So it's gonna have a heads up display of speed, RPM, motor voltage, everything. It's gonna be absolutely crazy. Uh, what else can I, got, can I show you guys? So basically, every electronic component from the bike translates directly to the go-kart project, or that is the mud thrasher. Cart loaded up. Let's go ahead and head over to the shop and let's get to work. I'm gonna start tearing this down now and give you a nice time lapse of that, and then we're gonna see what we're working with as far as mounting the motor on the go-kart. Let's get to work. <clears throat> Alrighty guys, as you can see behind me, uh, we got that motor out in quick record time. And I did a quick test fit to see how the electronics look inside this frame. And oh my God, guys, it's almost a match made in heaven. Let's take a look at it right now. As you can see, I have plenty of room to mount the motor at a proper angle. So that means my chain is gonna go around there and it's gonna give me a proper angle to pull. And uh, it's gonna help me get a good acceleration. And also there's plenty of room for batteries. Uh, and then I can wanna find a place to mount my speed controller. Uh, so guys, I got so much room to work with, and it's an absolute match made in heaven. To be honest, with all of this weight around the rear wheels, we may be able to do a wheelie. I don't know, guys. Hey, I'm just going to send it. I, at this point, let's go ahead and get this thing pressure washed. I want to get it cleaned up and see what we can do before I start making the motor mounts and bringing this monster to life. Let's get it.
first spin look at what the go-kart can do. I want to give you a detailed wiring instruction here in just a second. Let's check it out. She's alive. So as normal in all of my videos, guys, I wanna give you a comprehensive look at how I actually wire stuff. This is a very crude example of the wiring setup right now, just for preliminary testing. So let's go through the battery setup right now as I have it. So as we can see here, we have the Alltrack 72 controller, and then it's wired to the motor. So let's go ahead and follow the path of the wiring. It looks kind of messy right now, but this is only for testing. And it also gives you kind of a visual of what it takes to actually wire it. So starting from the battery negative here, as you can see this big orange cable loops around and it connects to the B minus of the controller. All right, so that takes care of that. All right, let's go to the positive side of the battery. This big orange cable goes into this switch. It's good to have a switch on your positive side. That way you can always control the flow of current if needed. And then it goes down to the battery P side or battery plus side of the controller. And on this specific controller, it actually connects to the motor wires here also. As you can see, one side of the motor wire goes up and it shares the battery plus connection on this controller. And then the other side of the motor connects to this negative output side of the controller. As you can see, it snakes all the way around. And then you maybe can see, you maybe can't, but it connects to the other side of the motor down on that side. Alrighty, so that takes care of your high voltage cabling. One thing that is not shown here that you will need on any type of connection is a small resistor in between your positive uh, connections here. What this does, it allows the battery voltage to slowly bleed into your controller, thus not shock loading your controller when you first turn on the switch. And what that looks like here is actually on my contactors. That little resistor there is very important for maintaining a healthy controller life. Um, I don't really have it on here because I'm doing only testing and it's a low voltage, but anytime you have high voltage, you need a pre-charge resistor. That's what it's called, a pre-charge resistor. And on to the other settings of this controller is this little cable here is also shares that battery plus. Uh, and what that is, is on this all tracks controller is that is your key switch, guys. So all this is, is a simple on off switch that shares, that goes two wires, comes in, and then it also goes here on this red connector here. So inside of here, basically all this switch is doing is connecting this red pin to battery plus power. And that is how you actually turn the controller on. And then finally, the last connection on my setup is the actual throttle input. This controller uses a zero to five volt throttle input. So here is the zero to five volt wires there. It's a black and a brown. And then behind me, here is the actual throttle. And you can measure these throttles to maintain, to make sure they're working properly by taking a multimeter and putting it on ohms. And then you can measure the resistance and it should go zero to five ohms. And as you can see, there is a green light on the controller. So let's go ahead and see if we can't power the vehicle up. As you can see, it comes to life quite quickly. So the chain alignment is working, as you can see there. It has a lot of torque. So she is alive, guys just that quick. So this is, like I said, very, very preliminary testing. I'm gonna make a proper battery mount. Uh, I'm gonna do everything right as far as mounting the controller, mounting the wiring in the proper order. But I just want to show you guys the proof of concept is done. And the next time you'll see this, it will be fully built. Uh, batteries will be fully assembled. And as you can see, there are the other Chevy Volt batteries, which I will be running in the 72 volt or possibly a 90 volt configuration. And then, uh, as you can tell in the other video or early in this video guys Brian is going to be competing with me with that 600 cc motor So this is going to have to get a lot more powerful But I'm going to test it to its max limits in this configuration And then we'll go and see if we can't defeat that gas powered beast So guys if you like this kind of content, please don't forget to like subscribe and put your comments below as 
telling me what you guys want to see more of this build but guys it's going to be some insane content absolutely crazy content and it's going to be coming in a weekly basis so don't forget to like and subscribe and vote performance i'll see you guys in the next one later